Hi, and welcome to this walkthrough of Crankwheel's remote control feature. When you're using remote control, uh, you start as normally by sharing your browser tab or your full screen. Unfortunately, it cannot work with uh, while sharing program window, but when you're sharing full screen, you can demarcate the part of the screen that you would like to give your viewer control over. Uh, now, because the first time we try to use remote control, it's going to prompt us uh, to install a separate helper application. It can be useful to do this before the fact so that our first uh, screen share with remote control doesn't need to be interrupted uh, for the install. So you can do that after remote control has been enabled on your account by uh, going to options, scrolling to the bottom and choosing enable remote control. It's worth pointing out at this point that uh, only presenters on Windows machines have access to the remote control functionality, whereas your viewer can be on any type of platform, whether it be a desktop, laptop, uh, a tablet, or their mobile phone. No need to download anything or prepare. Okay, so let's enable remote control. A few steps here. First step is to click here to download the helper. The download is finished. Then we do step two. Uh, click the downloaded file to install it. Now, before you see installation successful, you may see a prompt from Windows uh, where it's just telling you this is not a frequently downloaded file because uh, the remote control feature in Crankwheel is, is relatively recent. And you just need to get through this prompt and run the uh, application program anyway. Uh, once you see this dialog, installation successful, you can click OK here, and then go ahead and click Test Helper. At that point, you should see uh, this dialog, remote control ready for use, and it'll prompt you to close Crankwheel and then start it again uh, as you normally do. This is required so that Crankwheel is able to communicate with the new helper program. So closing Crankwheel, starting it again. And now if I share a browser tab, and now on another machine, I'm going to uh, connect by using the public link approach. And my viewer is telling me 73, and I, I accept them into the session and they're connected. And now if I want to uh, you know, start, I can start by screen sharing a bit, and then let's say I want to grant them control. I click grant control, and following these instructions, I'm gonna click inside of the tab where I want to grant control. So inside of the tab I'm currently sharing, click on, let's say, the background, something that doesn't really do anything by clicking it. So I'm going to click here. And you see how the state now has changed. Uh, the crank wheel pop-up says remote control ongoing. And it's telling us hold down control, alt, shift, and press the E key to end remote control. So that's the shortcut we can always use to end remote control. Uh, typically, it's Control Alt Shift E, but it can be a different uh, character combined with Control plus Alt plus Shift. We can always also always end remote control by locking our screen, so Windows L or Control Alt Delete. Now you see the blinking orange and orange and red border. This indicates uh, what area of our screen our viewer is able to remote control. And because we're sharing a browser tab, uh, screen sharing a browser tab, and granting control. It's, it's confined to the area where the web page is being shown. Now, this is the viewer moving the mouse, and this is the viewer selecting some text. So the viewer in this case is on uh, another laptop and can do most of the things uh, you can do as a, as a normal user. Uh, they could uh, scroll by clicking the scroll bar or by uh, dragging and dropping the scroll bar. Uh, they can switch to other web pages uh, as long as it's things they can do within here. Uh, they could also type in uh, text if needed. Oops. Let's go to this page here where there's an input field. And this is the viewer uh, typing in some text. And they can make text selections using shift and arrow keys. Um, they can delete text and so forth. Every, anything they need to do, uh, typical text editing is supported. They can also drag and drop uh, to select text like this. 
So uh, that's a, a viewer uh, remote controlling a browser tab. Now, as the presenter, I'm going to end remote control. And uh, let's, let's see the experience when you're screen sharing a full screen. Now, same as before, I, I go here to grant control. But when it's a full screen, I will see uh, these instructions where I'm told I need to select the area I'm going to grant them control over before they get control. So let's select the area. That brings up this large window with a snapshot of my screen. And because I previously was screen sharing a browser tab, I don't need to have granted control over it, but because I previously was screen sharing a browser tab, the default area that it sets is the area within the browser tab, so the area of my last shared browser tab. But I can, I can move this around if I want. I can make it bigger or smaller. Uh, drag any of the of the edges here. I can also set it to full screen by clicking here or set it to partial, which again is the default uh, setting of the last browser tab. If I hadn't shared a browser tab earlier in this screen sharing session, then it would default to sort of 80% by height and width sort of the middle of middle of the screen and I would always need to need to you know uh, change change the uh, location here. Um, now let's just set it to the browser tab for now. Grant control of selected area. There's a quick step there to identify monitors in case you have a multi-monitor setup. And now my viewer has control. And uh, as you can see, uh, there's the orange and red blinking border again showing where the control of the viewer is. And what you'll see, which I didn't show you before, is that when the viewer moves their mouse, it's going to stop at that border. You see, uh, because any mouse movements that are not inside the border they do not get transmitted uh, from the viewer to to the presenter screen which means for example the viewer cannot try to click in the location bar I, i'm trying to do that right now as the viewer but nothing is happening but i but they can click here let's say now it's worth noting that if you as a presenter move to the location bar then the viewer could type into that bar but as long as they are doing everything they cannot click outside of the area that you have specified, and therefore their keyboard entry is not going to go anywhere except within this web page. And I'm going to end remote control again. Actually, this time let me do it using the hotkey. Remote control has ended, and now we're back to a normal screen share. And we can do this back and forth as many times as we like. Um, another thing worth noting is when you're screen sharing a browser tab, and you grant the viewer control, if you open a different browser tab or you switch to a different program, that will automatically end the viewer's control uh, because otherwise they might start accidentally uh, controlling that other program if it's f in the forefront of your uh, computer screen. And that's all there is to it uh, for remote control with Crankwheel. It's very easy to set up. On the viewer end, there is nothing to set up and the controls are intuitive. They, they don't need to learn any new approaches. They just point, click, uh, use their keyboard if they have it. If they're on a mobile device, there is uh, a button they can use to drop down the, or to show the keyboard and they can start doing text entry. Um, you may sometimes need to help them, for example, if they are on a mobile device and they want to scroll, that's a little bit difficult to affect from the mobile. So you can help them live in the session and you can actually use your mouse on the presenter end while they have remote control uh, without needing to end remote control explicitly. So thank you very much for watching this walkthrough of Crankwheel's remote control functionality. I hope you enjoy the feature. Thank you.